Okay, I'm Randy Credico. Randy Credico live on the fly. I've been up since uh, five o'clock in the morning here in New York because I've uh, been reading what may as well be this, this epic piece in Yahoo News uh, about uh, Julian Assange written by Yahoo News. I want to tell you something. Michael Isakoff, who is our guest, is one of the writers. He's the uh, senior, uh, are you the editor? Or the chief I am the investigative chief journalist. investigative correspondent and editor at large. Well, I got to tell you something. This, uh, I had to read a couple of times, uh, is uh, quite a fascinating story. Um, let me go back. The last time you and I uh, spoke, uh, you uh, was on your uh, award-winning series, Conspiracy Land and the murder of uh, Khashoggi, which I, I urge people uh, go to our website, go to uh, Rokefin and other places uh, and uh, take a, a look or listen to that interview. It was fascinating. And it was about a journalist, uh, Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, congratulations on the uh, award uh, for uh, that wonderful series, Conspiracy Land. Michael Isakoff, are you getting a lot of heat from both sides? <laughs> I got a feeling you're getting a lot of heat right now. Your phone is probably re, uh, ringing left and right and uh, driving you crazy. As, as you know, uh, as well as anybody, um, I get heat all the time from all sorts of folks all across the political spectrum. So um, I'm kind of used to that. Well, I, you know, I've already gotten heat for doing this. I mean, I, some people say- uh, For doing know, what? For even interviewing on both sides, uh, interviewing uh, you today. This is I've been looking forward to with a lot of anxiety, I must say. Uh, because uh, Why? I well, I don't know. Because I'm an anxious guy, you know, recovering yeah. alcoholic. Uh, now, this, this piece, uh, which is all about the uh, assassination uh, attempts or plans mm -hmm. uh, by the CIA mm -hmm. uh, head, uh, Pompeo, and all of the machinations in between, uh, you know, w w was a very good read. I want to ask you, there are three reporters, yep. uh, uh, investigative journalists assigned to this story. When, before I go into the details of it, when did you uh, kick this off and what uh, sparked it? Well, uh, this has been in the works for months now. Um, my Yahoo colleagues, uh, Zach Dorfman, uh, who is an excellent Intel reporter, um, had picked up information about this and began working on it. Uh, and, and he brought in um, my, uh, uh, my former colleague, Sean Naylor, who's a, a, a Pentagon expert. He's covered the Defense Department for years and then, um, uh, and then brought in me as well to help with uh, the reporting on this. And it is such an amazing story. I mean, basically, if I could just sort of lay out the basics here for your listeners, um, the US intelligence community had been concerned about WikiLeaks for some time, going back to 2010 when it began publishing the, the, uh, the State Purloin. Department cables. Yeah, the purloined State Department cables. Wait um, a second, before you then, go on, before yep. you put also the war logs and all of that. Uh, right. The, the, uh, yeah. The collateral damage. You were actually at the press conference when Assange unveiled. No, no, I was at, I'm, I'm going to come to that. I was at the uh, speech that uh, Mike Pompeo gave in early 2017, after okay. he becomes CIA director, in which he called WikiLeaks a uh, non-state hostile intelligence. It's time to call out WikiLeaks for what it really is, a non-state hostile intelligence service often abetted by state actors like Russia. We know this because Assange and his ilk make common cause with dictators today. Yes, they try unsuccessfully to cloak themselves and their actions in the language of, liberty, language of liberty and privacy, but in reality, they champion nothing but their own celebrity. Their currency is clickbait, their moral compass non-existent, their mission, personal self-aggrandizement through destruction of Western values. And at the time, we kind of, I, like a lot of people, thought this was some kind of provocative talking point by Pompeo. He'd come up with some clever phrase that um, 
uh, it could be used to, to, against um, Assange and WikiLeaks. In fact, as we report, it was a lot more than that. Um, by this was a formal designation that opened the door for the CIA to do all sorts of things uh, against WikiLeaks that would otherwise have required a presidential finding and briefing to Capitol Hill by, uh, by using that designation of a hostile intelligence service. It allowed the CIA to launch what it views as offensive counterintelligence activities that don't need to be um, blessed with a presidential finding, that don't need to be briefed to Capitol Hill. And what, what prompted Pompeo to do this was the publication of details about the CIA's sensitive Vault 7 hacking tools. And once they did that, Pompeo basically launched an all-out war against WikiLeaks. Using that designation, there were plans to abduct him in a, a snatch operation uh, to steal the computers of uh, WikiLeaks uh, um, associates uh, to conduct all sorts of spying operation as though they were uh, countering a threat from the Iranian intelligence service or the Russian intelligence service. And as we report, there was even talk of a possible assassination. Well, let me just get back to that. Vault 7, uh, yes. which you knew about uh, back then. Uh, give us some details about the significance uh, and, uh, and- Yeah, well, this was the viewed as- The of Vault 7. Some mm -hmm. of the um, uh, things that uh, Vault 7 uh, was all about, you know? Some yeah, the, uh, right. The operational uh, methods. I, I should point out that this was uh, the largest data loss in uh, CIA history. It was a big deal. And basically the Vault 7 um, uh, leak involved the CIA's hacking tools, some of its most sensitive secrets about how the CIA penetrated the computer networks of folks overseas and how they did that and who they targeted and all that. This was, you know, from the CIA's point of view, an extremely damaging leak. Uh, it rattled the uh, CIA internally. And as we report, Pompeo wanted revenge. Well, wait a he second. To wait, go wait, after. I got to stop you there. Yeah. Also, uh, how they could spy on us domestically. There were so many different tools that they had how they could go into your phone, into your television set. There was a lot of stuff involved in Vault 7. And as you point out, only so much was released. That's correct. There were a lot of details that have not been published by WikiLeaks, but there were some that were, and, and this is what set the CIA off. Um, so that non-state hostile intelligence service line of Pompeo actually was a line that carried a lot of freight and opened the door for what was really became one of the most contentious intelligence debates within the Trump administration. Uh, and uh, there were White House lawyers who said, whoa, wait a second, what are you doing here? Uh, do we have the legal authorities to do this? Remember, when they start drawing up these abduction plans to snatch Assange, there wasn't even a criminal indictment pending against Assange. So then the question was raised, where are you going to take them? Where are you going to put them? Um, we don't have a legal process we can use against him. Uh, and um, uh, this was a huge problem, but it did play a role in getting the White House to spur the Justice Department to hurry up and bring criminal charges against oh, him. You, you, you bring that up, right. Uh, there were no criminal charges. You bring up the Obama administration uh, decided not to uh, indict Correct. In yep. fact, someone uh, who I've seen on television many times, a, a former spokesperson, Matt Miller, came out and said, if we indicted Assange, we'd have to indict the New York Times, uh, the Washington Post, CNN, and uh, the Wall yeah, Street. There is the difficulty in drawing the line and trying to make a distinction among various outlets that publish information. So, so this comes out. Now there's no criminal indictment. 
and and uh, Sessions is involved at that time. I know he came out and said this was a a, a big priority. How did he feel about uh, this uh, plan by Pompeo? Well, the Justice Department obviously is you know tends to be protective of its surf, turf. They wanted to make this a criminal process, a criminal prosecution, uh, which is authorized under the law. And, um, you know, it was, a, you know, that was the year after the White House uh, uh, nudged the Justice Department that the first criminal charge was brought against um, Assange. I should point out that there's a whole other element to this that's really worth talking about, which is, you know, the, the CIA war against WikiLeaks, um, you know, really goes into full throttle in, uh, in early 2017. And by the way, although abduction, snatch operations, assassinations were never authorized, those things never happened, although Pompeo wanted at least some of them to happen. Um, there were steps that the CIA took that it had not previously taken, um, including getting a, a audio and visual feeds of Assange from inside the Ecuadorian embassy. They were basically spying on the guy. Through Global. Wait a second. You're talking about the yes. UC Global. Well, UC Global, that's the Spanish firm that had been hired by the Ecuadorians uh, to provide security at the embassy and uh, appears to have been turned by the CIA to collect information about Assange and the people he was meeting with. Um, and, including um, his lawyers. Including his lawyers. Well, I think his lawyers are going to make that argument that attorney-client privileges were being uh, breached here by the I CIA. I was even spied on, okay? And I'm insignificant. They even got uh, diapers uh, from his uh, partners, yeah. their, their child diapers, yeah. To, uh, this is the CIA, I guess. They wanted to see if there was a match between Julian and one of the kids. Yeah. Well, look, you know, there were a lot of elements uh, to this story, a lot of plans, a lot of really extreme measures being talked about. But one thing that's here is we have, you know, confirmation that some of which had been alleged in the Spanish court case involving UC Global, in fact, happened visual and audio feeds of Assange um, spying and monitoring the communications of WikiLeaks associates and their travels all over Europe. So there was quite an extensive CIA surveillance operation of Assange. But I wanna come back to the point I was gonna make. All that was the early part of 2017, but then in later that year, the US intelligence community gets information that it views as credible that there's a plan to, for Assange to escape from the Ecuadorian embassy and that Russian operatives were on the ground preparing to spirit him away to an airport, put him on an airplane and fly him to Moscow. That triggers at the highest levels of the Trump administration, all sorts of plans to thwart this uh, Russian assistant assisted escape operation that the CIA believes it's going to take. There was uh, operatives were placed all around the embassy in undercover capacities. We quote one senior official saying that everybody within a three week, three block radius was working for one intelligence service or another. Uh, there were plans that if Assange ever made it to the airport and there was fear that he was going to be uh, spirited away in a laundry cart and the Russian operatives would take him. Um, there were plans for a gun battle on the streets of London to make sure that didn't happen. If he ever made it to the airport, they were going to shoot the tires on the airplane or use helicopters to force it down. This was, you know, straight out of Jason Bourne. Right, right. It, it sounds like uh, something uh, out of one of those spy novels. Now, you say that the uh, they viewed it as credible. I mean, have you any concrete evidence that no, and I should say Assange denies this, and you know we all all we're reporting here is that um, the uh, the the U.S. intelligence community and the Trump White House viewed this as credible. All right, so but we don't know for sure if this was going to happen. Maybe it was a no, uh, but there, but we know out. for sure that there were serious plans to thwart right, what right, they right. believed was real. going to happen. All right, so. Yeah. All right, you talk about the kidnap. Now, kidnapping and assassination, all right, bifurcate those 
into yeah. give us an overview on both of those. Okay, the kidnapping was something that was real, that there were real plans uh, that got briefed to the Trump White House. And that's one of the elements of what Pompeo was planning that um, the uh, uh, White House lawyers uh, raised concerns about. Uh, the assassination plans were more loose talk within the um, within the agency. There was uh, uh, there's reporting that we uh, share in this piece that the seventh floor, which is where the CIA director's office is located, had requested plans uh, or options uh, to go that route. Um, there's uh, some reporting also that Trump, when finally briefed on the Vault 7 stuff, did ask if Assange uh, could be assassinated. Trump denies that. Um, we have no information, no reporting that shows that the assassin assassination plans ever went to the White House for approval. Um, this was uh, internal talk within the CIA, but the abduction, the snatch operation did go much further. And so I, Trump has denied, I don't understand Trump's position. On Trump, Trump, Pompeo, you said, wait, Pompeo said was reluctant to go to Trump. Uh, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump, Pompeo was embarrassed. He was humiliated by the fact that, you know, his agency had just suffered this, you know, you know, terribly grievous, you know, leakage of its uh, most sensitive material. And at one point, as we report, Pompeo said, was didn't even want to brief Trump on it because he was embarrassed by it. And he was told by very senior officials, you have to tell the president about this. This uh, is it, a big deal. Now, what now? What was the cooperation of uh, the MI6 or the MI5 or Metropolitan well, Police? Well, they were, they were working in league. The uh, White House, the CIA was working in league with their British counterparts. And there were extensive discussions about certainly to how to thwart that um, feared uh, 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 escape from the Ecuadorian embassy. Uh, but the Brits uh, made it clear that if there were going to be shootouts, it should be the Brits who were shooting, doing the shooting, not Americans on British soil. Wow. So uh, it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing story. We're talking to Michael Isakoff, who is the uh, chief investigative uh, reporter for Yahoo News. And he's got this uh, explosive, he and the other two writers. Uh, how, how do you, I've been wanting to ask you from the outset here, how do three writers, uh, you know, actually plan and work together? <laughs> something like this? That can't be easy. Well, how do you no. designate the various responsibilities? Could you just lay that out? You know, I don't want to get too much into internal processes here, but look, as the piece says, we talked to over 30 uh, uh current and former intelligence officials in the course of, of, of doing this. There was a lot of uh, interviews to divide up. Some of us had relationships with some sources, others had relationships, others had relationships with other sources. And uh, basically uh, we pulled our reporting and produced what we produced. Why do you think uh, 30 uh, former officials actually came forward at this point in time? There were, I can tell you, there were quite a few who were quite concerned about what Pompeo was up to, that this went pretty far, uh, that this uh, did alarm uh, officials. Even hawks within the Trump White House were like, um, uh, you know, told me like, you know, uh, they were way out of, you know, off their skis on this. It was Pompeo and, and, and Gina Haspel were just determined to get revenge on WikiLeaks. And, you know, there was concern that they were, you know, took this too, way too personally and were going way too far in what they uh, had in mind. Haspel felt the same way as Pompeo. Uh, that's uh, our understanding, yes. Right. And she's still, she's not there anymore. Has I don't to, believe, no, she's right, gone. Right. She's, she's uh, gone. So um, now this stuff all unfolds and they decide not to do it. But uh, now the indictment, the indictment does right. happen. When do they start preparing this indictment against the in, in, in Late in 2017. And I think the first criminal charge, which is the, the Chelsea Manning charge that Assange uh, sought to assist uh, Chelsea Manning in cracking a pass code to get into a computer network. Uh, that's the, that was the first criminal charge against uh, Assange. In fact, you know, they didn't, uh, whatever 
Manning and Assange were talking about, uh, it doesn't appear that that led to any further leaks. And then, of course, later, um, they do produce a superseding indictment that has uh, multiple counts for violation of the Espionage Act. All right, going so, back to the leaking of the documents uh, in 2010. So now, now um, Obama decides not to indict him. And then Trump, through Pompeo's urging, I guess, and then Bill Barr ultimately is the person that, uh, you know. Well, the first charge is, uh, is Sessions is still there. Sessions is still there. Then, yeah. uh, then Barr then goes Barr. through with it. Is Barr on board uh, with this all the way? Um, with what? I mean, he still was on board with the, with the criminal charges. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, I, we have no information that Barr weighed in or was briefed on some of the other, you know, extra legal activity that the CIA uh, was talking about and involved in. All right. So now, now it uh, ends up. Uh, I just want to get the three uh, administrations. The first one, Obama says no. Then Trump does it, uh, and then. Uh, they end up, uh, the Trump charges end up uh, just before he's out of office, uh, the uh, judge decides not to extradite him, um, Baritzer. Uh, and then the Biden administration, and Biden was his vice president, they decide to go through with yes. indictment and appeal it. What, what, what swung the difference here to you? You know, um, we've seen this in a lot of cases where there's a lot more carryover of Trump positions under the Merrick Garland Justice Department uh, than I think a lot of people expected. And this is one of them. Now, some of this could just be sort of bureaucratic inertia. There's a lot on the plate of Merrick Garland and his top aides. And this was a uh, uh, an authorized indictment. It was, uh, you know, it had been presented to the court. Uh, and the institutional reflex of the Justice Department is to maintain uh, and support um, criminal prosecutions that had been previously uh, brought by a prior administration. We will see whether uh, the reporting we've done today uh, changes that calculus or not. Um, I think it will. I, I, I actually do. A lot of people think that what you expose, don't you think that does a lot of damage uh, to the credibility uh, of the, um, the indictment and, and the exuberance of the Justice Department in pursuing it? Well, we we'll, we will see. I think the first sort of you know possible fallout from this is I wouldn't be surprised. I don't have any confirmation of this. Although one of Assange's lawyers, Barry Pollack, does hint at this in the story, saying this is information that the British courts should consider uh, in ruling on whether or not Assange should be extradited to the United States. Well, it, it really is an explosive story, uh, and I got a lot more to talk to you about if you could stick around. Uh, I, I know you're watching the football game. You've had yeah. a very busy day today. I know you've had a busy day. You've yeah. had a busy day. Your son, your son uh, played baseball. He's a pitcher. He went yep. to, you went to the well, baseball game this morning. How did he do? Uh, he did pretty well on the mound. Yeah, he did. Uh, retired the sides. Uh, you know, and uh, struck a few guys out. And I don't think he gave up any runs. He might have given up one run. But anyway, uh, but he did well. well so, I know you're a baseball fan. And yeah. I'm a fan of the uh, Washington uh, Nationals, and I'm a fan of the Cleveland Guardians. I, I now can say that I support uh, Cleveland. Is that going to fly? I thought it was like uh, some kind of ultimate Frisbee team or something. Uh, the, the Guardians, they had a problem yeah. with, the, you know. You're, you're, I mean, you know, I, you know, my father and I used to uh, go to my baseball games and I was thinking about this this morning, uh, the, the fact that my father used to go to my games when I was in Pony League and Little League, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it was very, uh, it was great to have him there. And uh, we had a great relationship. We go fishing. I, I, I was thinking about you and, and I know how close you are with your kids. You're, you're a good family man. And I'm, and I'm thinking that Assange has been in this jail now for two and a half years and yeah. barely seen his kids at all. Yeah. Uh, how, how, how much of an impact do you think that might have on a kid growing up, not being able to spend time with their father? Yeah, listen, I'm sure it does. Uh, but unfortunately that doesn't, you know, hold much sway with uh, the justice department or the courts. If, you know, somebody is charged with a crime, uh, you, know, the, you know, something like that could factor into sentencing depending on the circumstances, but it's not going to, 
cause a Justice Department prosecutor or a judge to throw an indictment out. If he is indicted, I mean, he is indicted. He is indicted, yeah. If he is extradited, do you really think uh, he'd have much of a chance in the Eastern District of uh, Virginia? You think, uh, you know... Uh, you know, you never know. Uh, uh, it's uh, certainly he would have some arguments to make and certainly on appeal uh, going to those core issues of what constitutes um, a, uh, a, a news outlet today. And um, where do you draw the line? And this is something that, you know, bedeviled the Obama folks. You know, if we bring charges for publishing against WikiLeaks for publishing classified information. What do we do the next time when the New York Times or the Washington Post or Yahoo News publishes classified information? Well, I'm wondering what they're gonna do to Yahoo News uh, when this uh, reverberates uh, back uh, to the yeah, highest we'll, uh, channels. We'll, we'll, we'll find out, <laughs> yeah. won't we? All right, well, I, I, it's a great story. If you have to go, you have to go. I understand that. Uh, but we're gonna take a, uh, a quick break here. We're gonna go out at one station and continue on. I'm Randy Credico, Randy Credico, live on the fly here uh, on this particular station that you're listening to uh, in New York City. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back, uh, and uh, I'm Randy Credico, Randy Credico live on the fly uh, here uh, in various uh, networks around the country uh, and uh, talking with Michael Isakoff, uh, an old friend of mine. I consider you a friend, and, and over the years, you won awards for your work. Uh, I go way back uh, to 1991, uh, something on Bill Barr back then, and uh, what took place when he designated legally a legal paper about you could go into Panama and snatch a right. foreign leader, right? Did you get a lot of heat for that? You know, I, no, not that I remember. I mean, it got a little attention at the time. I was at the Washington Post. I was covering the Justice Department and, um, you know, Barr, took, who was then, this was in his first iteration as attorney general. And um, he kind of, you uh, you know, had a very expansive view of what uh, federal authorities and presidential authorities were. And uh, in his view, it included the ability to abduct uh, suspects abroad, which is kind of ironic that you bring it up because that's exactly what the CIA was thinking of uh, uh, to do to Julian Assange. But as I pointed out before, and this is a critical difference, you know, it's one thing to do a snatch operation or a rendition when you've got criminal uh, uh, when you've got a criminal indictment pending against that individual, you bring him back to the United States and you uh, make him face the bar of justice. It's another thing when you do it when you don't have criminal charges uh, against the person because like on what grounds are you holding them? There were lots of renditions uh, during the uh, uh, war on terror, the early years of the war on terror. The CIA was bringing people to black site prisons in, uh, in Eastern Europe and doing all sorts of uh, enhanced interrogation techniques uh, that later basically became torture, we, we now view as torture uh, of these suspects. And that's the reason a lot of these guys have, we've never been able to try them. Look at what's been going on in Gitmo for years. They still haven't been able to bring the 9-11 suspects to trial, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and his uh, Confederates because of the extreme measures that were used against them. Well, it's been, they've been there for 20 years without a trial. 20, yeah, 20, I know. What does it's, that tell you? I it's, mean, a, I, it's a legal fiasco, uh, you know, maybe unprecedented in American history. Right. It's, it's, it's even, uh, you know, Russia and the U.S. Uh, released Nazi prisoners after, you know, a couple of years, you know, that were prisoners of war. Um, right. So I, um, getting back here, uh, they did not have the legal basis uh, if they not were, until well, later in 2017. Yes, they, 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 they prepared an indictment at the end of 2017. Well, when, right, this right. Was, when this was dreamt up, 
they were going to do it willy nilly. Where were they going to take him? That's that's exactly one of the questions that was raised internally within the Trump White House. And I had a senior Trump White House official asking that very question. What were we going to do with him if we abducted him and we did not have a pending criminal indictment? And I just want to go back to the beginning. Uh, did they um, come to you, uh, these former officials? I mean, is that how this thing was initiated? Uh, former officials and uh, were they lawyers uh, with the CIA? Um, were they? Yeah, I, I can't go beyond the sourcing that's in the story, but you know these things happen in many different ways uh, and get communicated in many different ways. And I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Well, well, I you know uh, thank you uh, for uh, appearing. I know you, you 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 must be busy. Are you getting a lot of calls? Um, you know, I got a lot of calls from you this morning or a lot of signal messages. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, the piece is stirring some interest. I'm getting a lot of emails and texts, uh, as is my both of my colleagues, Zach Dorfman and Sean Mailer, who did great jobs on this. Are they both in D.C.? or was, No, of, no, no, no. They neither. Uh, well, Sean is. Sean is. Zach is, is not. All right. Anybody uh, travel to, uh, to uh, the U.K. Uh, for this or? Um, I don't believe any of us uh, did go to the UK for this. Well, it's a lot of work and, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot to talk about in it, but we just don't have time. Maybe you can come back on and we can sure. go into more into the story. Uh, but uh, I, I want to thank Michael Isikoff. Uh, what's next for you? <laughs> Football this afternoon. Football this yeah. afternoon. A lot, a lot of Our, good games this I afternoon. I hope your son right. uh, does very well in the playoffs. I'm sure he's playoff bound. Uh, okay. It's always great to talk to you. Randy Critical, Randy Critical Live on the fly uh, here in New York City. Uh, and uh, we'll see you uh, very soon, folks. Thank you very much. Uh, and that's it. That's the show for today. Uh, we're going to go out with some music that I don't even know. Goodbye.